we go. I just saw the little pop then. Haven't got much line on there, mate. Got it. Should be right. Here's pop the present button just once on the top there. Just one that should. Whoa, that's a fish. <laughs> that's a good left in there. Morning, all. Uh, welcome back to another episode. Back out in the boat this morning. Uh, Brad's sitting this one out. He's still at home filling up the swear jar from the last episode. With me this morning, I've got Darren Ryan uh, from Rhone Tackle, aka Dags, a living legend. Morning. <laughs> and we are out tasting some Spanish mackerel, hopefully. Uh, so we're just going to go and uh, find some live baits and then we'll probably yank her up and do a bit of old school mackerel fishing under balloons and stuff. And we'll walk you through the techniques once we get out there. We've got to find the bait first. All right, we'll see you out there. So guys, in terms of technique, I'm just fishing a 10 kilo mono outfit, so those dags. He's fishing actually old old school, TLD15, yep. mate. Yeah, nice. Old, old, old baby that one, mate. So, so 10 kilo mainline. What size leader are you using? 40 pound. 40 pound. Black Magic or? Um, I think it's Jinkai. So he's using Jinkai. I'm using 40 pound leader too, but I'm using a Black Magic Tough Chase. 10 kilo mono, um, like I said, biodegradable balloons. You want to make sure you use biodegradable, so and uh, float out there what for are you ages. the balloon on with just a bit of two kilos? Yeah, a little bit four four pound mono. Okay. And the theory behind that is it'll sit out on the surface, obviously, and the fish is going to hit it, and then uh, the pressure from the strike is going to pop that balloon off, and it'll float away and biodegrade, and then you just got nothing between you and your fish straight down to your hooks, which is what you what I prefer anyway. Um, and then in terms of actual rigs. Because um, mackerel, both the spotted mackerel and the smash mackerel have really sharp dentures on them, you've got to use wire. So just a small swivel, simple rig. There's plenty of these on YouTube. Just Google Spanish mackerel rigs and you'll find a host of blokes that can do some good rigs. Uh, small swivel, 44 pound single strand, an inline hook uh, that 5-0 I use, and then just down to a small treble. Make sure your trebles are pretty strong. You like those? What, what, what do you recommend in terms of trebles? Like the VMCs, I think, like they're pretty good. They, yeah. they don't rust too quick. Six they're times heavy, So they're a six times. So yeah. that's a VMC 8527. How do you know that shit? Well, uh, anyway. With that, what but, Dag um, said. <laughs> that's the most popular treble round. Yeah. Like I'm running actually 58 pound wire. Yeah. So it's yeah. Spanish and that sort of thing. I just tend to find 58 with a few big fish around. Gives you a bit more of a chance. 44 is great with spotties in that. But yeah. you got a chance of a really good Spanish. Yeah. Sometimes they can. Yeah, no, you're right. There you go. That makes sense. Probably a little bit heavier than the 44 pound if you're up that big barry because they have well, got all... on bigger baits. I'm happy to run sort of 69 pound wire. Yeah, the thing if you're putting a, a bonito or a, or a live tailor out or something like that, 69, even 86 on yeah. bigger baits and bigger hooks won't worry your fish at all. Right, uh, you love that 69, yeah. <laughs> 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 And then in terms of the bait, if I can actually catch one in here, uh, you really want, when you can find them, these fellas, slimy mackerel, like a swimming Mars bar. There's all different schools. Probably school. known as a love biscuit. A love biscuit, mackerel that's terms. it, yeah. They love those limes. Yep. If there's mackerel around, it's pretty... They've been a bit tough this year sort of thing, so they've been taking yellowtail as well, but ideally if you can get slimy mackerel that's the one you want in the bait of yeah. choice isn't it? yeah that's your bait of choice for if there's a mackerel out there they're not going to swim past that so you put that stinger just very lightly pinned in the back there and it's all different sort of schools on thought and where to position your hook so up to you as dag said just do whatever works for you there's no right or wrong way it's just you do what, what works for yourself and then they don't swim out and they stay under your boat and drive you nuts like this <laughs> I made it. Been out there for a while, so get yours out. And... Yeah, that's not a bad idea, eh? If your bait's been out there for a couple, while. Got a couple of baits there, sort of thing, so I would put a freshie out. Put a freshie on. It's Especially... amazing how often when they're fishing a bit funny, you can wind a tide bait in. Yeah. Put a fresh one out, put him out, and he goes Gets 20 metres straight and off. on the way out. Yeah. So... Especially when you know there's fish around, and if your bait hasn't been heckled or touched for a while, maybe just check it. Yeah. Sometimes they can be quite sneakily removed from your hooks, can't they, by these things? One rain school out of the way, next one coming by the looks of it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty grey there, isn't 
Yeah. This brings, brings back memories of me, this style of fishing, particularly with this bloke. We used to do this when we were young fellas. I shudder to think how long ago that was. But it is, a, like I said, it's a really good technique. It's also visually, you know, a lot of fun when you see your balloon going off. And I, oh, I've got a heckle there. Come on, is there something up that? Like I said, primarily we're chasing a Spanish mackerel here doing this, but you'll pick up spotted mackerel as we just showed you. Uh, long tail tuna, mac tuna, unfortunately, snapper, cobia. This kind of technique is really not limited to one particular species. You'll, uh, you'll find that a lot of different pelagic fish will fall to this style of fishing. You'll see that explosion on the surface, mate. Oh, oh here we go. go. It's got that on. Yeah. That's what we wanted. So that's what we wanted, guys. We just pull you in just a tad, bro. Uh, Dave, because he's just going left towards you there. No, oh, he's drowning here. But that's what we're after, guys. That sound. Straight back at me. <laughs> you see, you're getting heckled in for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're up there, right? It's gonna run. <laughs> what is it? What do you mean? Should be. Is there a gap in there? First body for the season. Shot. Thanks, mate. Nice work, mate. There you go. First body of the season. Yeah. Bleed around you, mate. Gotta drop some blood over. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's uh. What we came for is a spotted mackerel. It's actually a brother or cousin bags, but the one we're really chasing the Spanish mackerel. You see the really, oh, well, here comes the weather dags. Uh, you can see the real definitive spots on there. So the Spanish mackerel we're chasing got like bars around vertically along the body. That's a spotted mackerel, just as good to eat. Uh, good fun sport fish, they really hit hard as you just saw with that one. So, hopefully, we'll get his bigger cousin. Rain. Here she comes. Look at the bait under us now. Yeah, it's going to get one more fish here. And just on, uh, on tackling techniques, we'll run through that a little bit later on, but we're just ballooning, like I mentioned earlier. Put the live baits out on a balloon. Bit of an old school technique. Uh, both Dags and I are pushing the big Hawaii 5 0, aren't we, mate? So we still remember the <laughs> old school methods of pulling fish. But we'll run through that a bit later on to tackle the technique we're using to get them. It can be deadly effective, though, on these inshore mackerel. Yeah, you want that, mate? I don't want it. Yeah, mate. You'll let that one. Go back, mate, on top. And away we go. I just saw the little pop then. Haven't got much line on there, mate. Go, yeah, should be right. Here's pop the present button just once on the top there. Just one that should be. Whoa, that's a fish. Just saw the balloon pop. Oh, yeah, that's not, not a lot of line. I'm thinking long tail. I'm thinking spooled. <laughs> ah, no. How fast can you... No. Bugger. I'm going to have to. I've got no choice but up this one. Just popped it, I think, did I? Yeah, it popped it. Popped it? <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much left. More than much left. <laughs> He was going. That was motoring. <laughs> he was cooking. <laughs> there you go, guys. Something you just can't stop. That's one of them. 
How much line left? I had to increase the pressure there and popped it obviously, but yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> Uh, they got a long tail. I haven't had a Spanish do that big screaming around for a while, but he was walking. That was amazing. I just saw the blanket. Real small at all. Yeah. Very subtle. Yeah, if you hadn't been watching it, you wouldn't have seen it. Could have been like the old blue pin. I think it would be. I think it would be locked up. That was looking, mate. It was just. I wasn't telling his time to slow on or anything, was he? Get angry. <laughs> okay. That's his flash out back there. Yeah. Yeah, huge. Huge flash out there. Come back out of it. He's got to go. That was spotty, I think. I'll just keep mine short here, mate. Come on, mate. Oh, that was a huge hit out there. Exploded it. I'm trying to get mine out past the noise. Just trying to bring you inside it, yeah. Keep cleaning it out and put it out a long way, mate. There's another chance at a long bait gone both times. Yeah. Today's good again, so that's the end of the room. Both Dags and I are a big believer in having one long bait right out the back. And Spanish, like they, that's nine times out of Spanish, that's the end of the place. Yeah, it always goes off, eh? Out. You never know, it could be. Oh, he's trimming out. He never knows. He's got a bit more weight to him, this one. Got up front for a while now, you'll see him a bit. I'll wait down the back here for you, mate. Alright, folks. I'm happy about that. <laughs> you get heck on? Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, look at that, you can see it. <laughs> oh, he's waking up that one. <laughs> you wouldn't be, would you? You couldn't pay me enough to be a slimy mackerel in mackerel season. And this guys is the beauty of inshore mackerel fishing and using this style of technique. It's just when it's on, it's on, isn't it? Good fun. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Use this. Use this. Use this body to clap out after a bit of farting around, don't it? Hanging in there a bit now. Hanging in there a bit now, yeah. This is Tinos for a nice river there, money, aren't they? They are, yeah. Tinos is the mate. This is the one you saw. This is the one you saw me the other day, but this is so good. Smooth, eh? Yeah. Brad's going at home fishing, uh, filling up the square jar. We've been after one of these. Yeah, he's taking one. A ten litre one. <laughs> That's not a spot at all, eh? No. Okay, yeah, so thanks, mate. You went deep there for a minute. Yeah. 
There's a lever. That has to be something decent, doesn't it? Yeah, Spanish. Big spot. No, you've been shot. Oh, oh no. Bugger. Ah. Oh, no. Nice little chop there, mate. So. Well, that was my first Spanish mackerel for the season. <laughs> Bugger. I thought he was playing up that little bit. I thought he gave up a bit quicker yeah. at the end there. He was playing up, yeah, you're right. Uh, Palmer. You'll still eat that way? Yeah, mate, yeah. That's how quick you can happen with Sharp, but we always had him to the boat there. He was playing up a bit to the thing, it was just like, like yeah, yeah, when he went that second time, it was like, yeah, he's there, they're a really good fish. Yeah. <laughs> or, or he had a shadow. He had a shadow, yeah. And then that's, that's a shadow. And there's more and more of this happening nowadays. Yeah, isn't there? Probably why we fish that bit heavier now, fishing 10 kilos to the yeah. thing. Like years ago, we used to fish sort of four and six and have a bit of fun with them. But nowadays, with the way sharks are, sort of thing, fishing can't that light tackle, you really can't afford to wasting too many fish. So. Can't afford to have a fish in the water that long because that's the result, unfortunately. Turn that hook up, right, mate. Treble right in the tip of the nose, mate. Turn that so, stinger in action there. That's why you use a treble. Yep, that stinger right there. And the other hook's not even and This is fish. why you use wire because it's yeah. just. Oh, yeah. So now it's just like uh, cutting through butter. Farmer, do you still eat that way? Yeah, I okay. do. Make the most out of it, don't waste him, so. Yeah. It just buck right over. Yeah, your balloon's off in it. You're on, eh? Yeah. You're mining. You on? You're gone. Fish here? No, you got me. I got yeah, you, I mean, sorry. I was winding inside with you. Yeah. Oh. Have a look at your bait. Can I look for a big stick? That's your one, I think. That's mine. So that's your bait for six. So that guy, that's a, what do you reckon, that classic mackerel? That's got teeth marks on the other side. Yeah, it's something to take on. So, that was Dags' bait. It's got some slash marks there. I just saw his rod buck over. We were actually meant to be going home, but we are just sheltering from the rain here. We put another bait out. Sure enough, he's been hit. Somehow that's Mr. Hooks, mate. Alright guys, that's us. Uh, we're going to call it a day. We've been here, what, about three hours? Yeah, so it's been a pretty short little session. Three hours, yeah. And you see, we're really close to shore here. This is a typical Coffs Harbour, your northern New South Wales headland. A bit of restructure coming off it. You really don't need to go far at all. Dags was just saying a minute ago that some of the better fishing you can get, particularly around our area, is right in place here. And that's the, the proof in the pudding there. You know, it's not a mackerel. Half a Spanish mackerel. Simple gear, just use a 10 kilo mono, pretty basic overhead reels. Uh, 40 pound litres, put them out on the balloon. Yeah, the beauty of cost, like we don't have to travel too far to find fish, and yeah. some of our best fishing sort of five minutes on the boat ramp, like you're using eight litres of fuel for, this morning, for the morning. Yep. Yeah. And you're producing fish like this, so you don't need a big boat or anything to do it, you can fish it out of a four metre tinny. Yep. That's and you get quality fish like that, so you don't really need to go miles and miles away. Both of them are really good eating, uh, as the sharks will tell you. And uh, it's right here on your doorstep. And you can be home by 5.30, not done with the business. You're going to be in trouble with the gear. Should be pretty good today, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be in trouble. All right, thank you for... <laughs> I'm always in trouble, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, hit that, what is it, like, notification and subscribe button. And we'll see you next episode. Bye for now.